Greetings, people of God. My name is Emily Meyer. I am an ordained pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and serve as the executive director of the Ministry Lab, a resource curating and webinar creating collective of the UCC, UMC, and two presbyteries of Minnesota, the Synod of Lakes and Prairies and the Presbytery of the Twin Cities area. My friend and collaborator, Melissa Weinhandel, a marriage and family therapist associate and faith formation leader at Peace Lutheran Church of Plymouth, Minnesota, share this visual word in gratitude for the work of our colleagues who are serving their communities in so many new and sometimes exhausting ways. We have invited clergy to insert this visual word in the place of a personally prepared sermon, if doing so would help them care for themselves or their communities. Siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from our divine Creator, from our Savior Jesus the Christ, and from the life-giving, indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen. Inspiration, being inspired, inspirited, filled with the sacred breath. This is what Christians around the world celebrate on the day of Pentecost. This year, our celebration of the prophetic, inspiring, creative breath of God has been tainted. Five months of grief and mourning and a very visceral and literal fear of breathing leading to death make joyful singing about Jesus breathing on us the breath of life almost macabrely comical. And today is not a day for celebration. This is a time of mourning. Followers of Jesus, who had anticipated with joy the coming of the Spirit, must join in grief, anger, and mourning. For the sacred breath has been stolen from yet another African-American man. Another child of God has had the flame of life smothered out of him at the hands of a police force and the systems and attitudes that create and train and support that police force. And tragically, we all know that George Floyd will not be the last victim of racism. George Floyd will not be the last beloved child of God whose life is lost to hatred, fear, and apathy. George Floyd must be, but will not be, the last. Others will raise a far more authentic and immediate voice. Others will be able to speak with greater zeal and passion. Others will share far more powerful and eloquent words than I. So rather than add my inadequate words, I urge us to take a moment to listen to the Spirit, to listen to the divine breath, speaking, crying, shouting, weeping, raging, whispering, within and around us. If you have one, I invite you to light a candle. If you don't, let the flames in this video serve that function. Set the candle or screen in the center of your space where it can be a focal point. Sit upright. Tradition and science agree that an upright posture with both feet on the floor, the head resting comfortably at the top of the neck, with the chin slightly tucked and the shoulders drawn up and back and down, is optimal for awareness and other benefits of contemplative practices, of which this will be one. Let your hands rest in your lap. I encourage you to close your eyes about halfway and let your gaze linger on the candle or the flame images in this video. The intent here is to diminish external distractions and give the part of your brain responsible for processing visual input a break. Allow other parts of your awareness to come to the fore. Take a few moments to settle into this way of being.
I invite you to bring your attention to your breath. If you prefer, you can simply focus on the breath throughout this time of prayer and let my voice become peripheral. If you do so, maybe allow each breath to be an intercession, a prayer for those who so desperately are in need of prayer. If you find direction helpful, I invite you to focus on the in-breath and the out-breath, each breath becoming more and more full. Let each inhale fill you completely. Hold the breath in for just a beat or so, and exhale, emptying the breath all the way out. Hold the breath out for a moment. Continue to inhale and exhale deeply with a slight pause between each for just a few moments. Gratitude can help us move toward deeper awareness. Take a moment to give thanks for your breath. Each breath is a gift, an affirmation of life, a sign of health. With each breath in, you might say silently to yourself, thank you. With each breath out, you might say silently to yourself, gratitude. For a few moments, repeat Thank you with each breath in, reminding yourself that each breath is a gift. Repeat gratitude with each breath out, sharing a spirit of gratitude with the world. Gratitude can open us to empathy. At the first Christian Pentecost, Peter repeated the words of the prophet Joel, declaring that God continues to pour out the Holy Spirit on all humans. Jesus promised the Spirit would be an advocate. In our grief, that the Divine Spirit has been snuffed out of a beloved black child of God. Let us listen for the Advocate's prophetic voice. Listen for the prophecies of our sons and daughters. Listen especially for the prophecies of the sons and daughters of people of color. Jesus promised 
that the Divine Spirit would inspire and empower his followers to shake things up to the ends of the earth. Yet she would be a spirit of peace and forgiveness, too. Moving beyond the easy, insufficient, and not true peace of personal comfort, complacency, silencing, apathy, and forgetting, let us look to the spirit who comes in tongues of flame, the flames of burning buildings, the flames of anger and passion, reflective of Christ's own anger and passion for the well-being of the world, the fires of justice burning in the eyes of protesters. In our grief that the divine spark has once again been snuffed out of the body of an African-American man, let us look for the helper's inspiring guidance. Look for the visions of our young men and women. Look especially for the visions of our young men and women of color. creation, the divine breath moved over the waters, and God's dream of life, abundant and rich, came to be. Life, the promise and the gift for every creature, and God declared all life good. In our grief that the divine breath has been snuffed out of our brother George Floyd, let us long for the counselor's life-giving dreams. Wonder about the dreams of our elders. Wonder especially about the dreams of our elders of color. Spirit of God is poured out upon us, filling each of us. 
uniting all of us. Every being on this planet, all creation, is filled with the divine breath. Prophetic voices are crying in pain and outreach on the streets. Visionary voices are calling for change across the airwaves and social media. Dreamers of peace and a life that is truly good are protesting and have been for generations, shouting for justice, for equity. For the sake of God's beloved community, for the sake of peace and hope, for the sake of the wholeness of all creation, for the sake of the safety, health, and well-being of each and every one of us. Now, people of the Spirit, it is time to listen. <laughs>